Hi, Keith here from Academy of Bass. Today I'm looking at something that can change the way that you sound on bass completely, and it's note length. A good bass player is someone that has full control over the length of the notes that they play, and it's the length of a note that can make the biggest difference to the sound of a bass line, or the impact that it has on the music being played. I'm going to start by playing a simple bass groove. I'm playing over two chords here, F7 and B flat 7. By the way, there's a completely free PDF for this lesson. It's got everything in that I'm going to be talking about, fully notated in both standard notation and tab. And I've also included a few backing tracks in that download too, so the link to that is posted below. Make sure you grab a copy. Just quickly, I'm going to look at what I played there. So I played F, an octave F, then I jumped down to C, which is the fifth of F7, E flat, which is the flat and seventh of F7, E, which is the natural 7 or the major 7 of F, and then back to F the root. And I played exactly the same thing over the B flat, started with B flat root, then an octave B flat, back down to C, E flat, D and F. You could, if you wanted to, play the same pattern from each root note. All of the notes that I played there were long, which meant that the bass line sounded fluid and smooth and it had a momentum to it, much in the same way that a walking bass line has momentum because it uses notes of similar length. What I'm going to do now is play the same line, but this time I'm going to cut the notes short. <laughs> Long, short again, so you can hear the effect on the bass line of cutting the note short. In the first bass line, the long notes made the bass line sound smooth, fluid, it had a swing or a momentum to it. By cutting the note short, it sounded very different. You might say that it sounded punchy or that it had a bounce to it, but for me, it just sounded different. And when I was playing the bass line with the short notes, I naturally accented some of the notes in that line. So it was the octaves. And that in itself made the bass line sound completely different. Before I look at how we can really control the length of the notes that we play, I'd like to look at a couple of other things really quickly. The next thing I'm going to do is play another groove, but this time I'm going to mix and match the length of the notes that I'm using. I'm still playing over F7 and B flat 7, but this time it's two bars of F7 followed by two bars of B flat 7. <laughs> was a fairly typical 16th note funk bass line and within that bass line I played lots of different types of notes. I played some long notes, some short notes and even some percussive notes too. I'm not going to look at what I played there because it's all there in the free PDF so don't forget to grab a copy of that but there are a few things that I'd like to talk about. So I started by playing a long F root note and I followed that with a sequence of percussive notes. <laughs> And then to lead us into the B flat, I played this long B natural, which yes, is a chromatic note that leads us into it. But in contrast to the previous line that I played, which was percussive, I made that B long. And straight away, that lets the listener know that something is going to happen. <laughs> sets up the chord change really nicely. I'm going to play that again, but this time I'm going to cut it short so that you can hear the difference. And that's okay, but for me it doesn't quite set up the chord change in the same way. Over the B flat 7 chord, I did something very similar. So again, there was a percussive flurry of notes. 
ended up with these three long notes, C to C sharp to D, D's the third of B flat, and that's a cliched line, it sounds great, it's used everywhere, but it's a nice end to the B flat seven chord, and it also leads us really nicely back into the F seven. But again, I'm going to cut those notes short so you can hear the difference. Now, because it's a funk bass line, that actually works. But for me, I still prefer the contrast of the longer notes. For this last example, I'm going to play a completely different type of groove. So this is a country rock or country blues groove and I'm playing over an E7 chord. The notes that I'm playing are E the root note, B the fifth, D the flat and seventh and I'm also playing this G which is the flat and third. Now that note's not even in the E7 chord but it sounds really good. All of the notes that I'm playing are long too so it's got a real swing to it but what does it sound like when I cut the note short? Does it sound the same? Well, for me, it doesn't. It just doesn't have the same swagger. But I'm going to develop this line a little bit further now. So I'm playing over two chords again here. I'm playing over E7 and I'm playing over A7. And because the majority of the notes that I'm playing are long, I've chosen to vary the length of the notes that lead us into each chord so that I can punctuate the chord changes in different ways. <laughs> So from this E7 leading us into A7, I'm playing this. It's quite a short percussive line. We've got two Bs, an E, a B, and an open E. Then I play a long G and a G sharp, which leads us chromatically into the A. So we've got a mixture of short and long notes there. to A7, and I chose to play this chromatic line that leads us into E, but I cut the note short purposefully just to punctuate that. We've got C sharp, D, D sharp, and D sharp again. So on the A7 we get back into the long notes. Again. Into A7. Back into E. Now I'm getting into what this lesson is really all about and that's looking closely at note length and how we can play notes of different lengths accurately and also how we can control them too. Now to help me demonstrate this I'm going to play a really common walking blues rock and roll line. I'm playing this in A so I'm playing I'm playing A, C sharp, E and F sharp or root third, fifth and sixth and I've purposely chosen to play this line because it's almost certain that you've heard it and the chances are you've probably played it too so hopefully that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to practice. I'm going to start by playing this bass line but I'm going to be really careful to try and make sure that I make each note last for exactly the full length of a beat. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
So what I'm doing there is being really careful in what I'm playing. When I played the first note, I'm allowing that to sustain and I'm not cutting it off until the very moment that I play the next note. Similarly with the next note and again with the last note. And you're probably sat there thinking, well, that's really easy. I can do that. Well, please give it a go. We've got a tendency when we play to want to cut notes short and it takes an awful lot of control to make sure that you can play a note that lasts for a, a full length of a beat at any tempo so give it a go what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take a beat and i'm going to subdivide it into four so i'm going to subdivide each note into four so we've got one e and ah, that's four sixteenth notes and i'm going to show you how notes of each length sounds. I'm going to start with the polar opposite of a note that lasts for the full length of a beat. And I'm going to make the first note last for the shortest possible length I, I can. And then I'm going to increase that very gradually. So here we go. Really short. increase that now one e one e one e one e now we've got a 16th note i'm going to increase it again one and one and one and one and one and one and this is an eighth note So there you've got a full range of notes. We've got a note that lasted for the full length of a beat and every variation in between. And these are all the notes of different lengths that we've got at our disposal to use in bass lines. Now, the next thing I want to look at is what I was doing to control the length of those notes because I was using techniques with my fretting hand and also my picking hand. So I'm gonna look at the shortest note there, the shortest 16th note where we played one E, one E, one E, one E. If you look at my fretting hand really closely, after playing each note, I'm physically lifting my fingers off the string so I'm not depressing the note and that's stopping the note from sustaining. Now you could do that on its own, it'll work fine, but I've actually got a secondary thing going on and that's with my picking hand. And what I'm doing is I'm using my picking hand to mute the strings to make sure that there's no additional no noise and there's no string ringing. So as my fingers walk across the strings, and I'm, I'm using an alternate picking technique here, I've done a lesson previously in alternate picking, so I will post a link to that. So I'm using this picking technique where I pick with my first and second fingers, and I alternate. So I pick with my first, my second finger falls on the next string to make sure there's no string noise. Pluck with my second finger, my first finger rests on the string to make sure there's no string noise. Pluck with my first finger again, and then my second. So I've got this rolling technique. Now that coupled, this picking action, coupled with the left hand muting means that I'm killing a note short and there's no residual noise. On occasion, I'll actually include that technique by using the anchor, my thumb anchor. So sometimes if I'm playing on the E string, and I transfer to the A string, I'll actually move my thumb to anchor on the E string, and that adds as some extra muting. But that's a technique that I use all the time. If that doesn't work for you, that's absolutely fine, but 
both of these techniques work really well and they help me control the length of a note and being in control of the length of the notes that you're playing is very very important just for a bit of fun i'm going to play those same notes again but this time i'm going to play them at a faster tempo and also with a busier accompaniment so that you can hear how they sound in a different context this note lasts for a full length of a beat here's the opposite So this is no different to any other playing technique. It requires practice, but working on controlling the length of the notes that you play and also how to accurately mute will help you sound like a much more accomplished bass player. If you've enjoyed this lesson, don't forget to give me a shout out in the comments and feel free to like the video and also support the channel by subscribing. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, happy practicing.